Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk about fly rod selection. Now if you're just getting started in fly fishing, this is a fantastic place to start, purchasing a fly rod. But with hundreds of fly rods on the market and dozens of manufacturers claiming to be the best, how can you be sure you're really selecting the right rod for you? So today I'm going to discuss the purpose and the components of a fly rod so that you can make sure you're selecting the right rod for you. These are things I really wish someone would have shared with me before I bought my first or even second or third fly rod. Good fly rods help facilitate good fly casting and basically consist of a reel seat, a cork handle, fly line guides, and possibly a hook keeper. You'll notice that all fly rods have a taper. They're thick at the butt end of the rod and they get thinner as you go towards the tip. Now the purpose of the taper is to allow the manufacturers to build in different fly rod actions into the fly rod and it's also to help facilitate good fly casting. You need that taper. Okay, you're typically gonna hear fly rods described as either, as either having a fast or slow action. Now for the purpose of illustration, I'm gonna use this little practice rod here to describe rod actions. So when you're talking about a fast rod, a quote unquote fast rod, you're talking about a rod that's gonna be stiffer throughout the taper and when you cast, it's gonna be more of a tip flexion. Okay, you're gonna notice that on a fast rod. When you're talking about a slow rod, you're talking about a rod that when you cast is, is gonna bend more either in the middle section of the rod or towards the butt end of the rod. And that's gonna give you, uh, you're gonna feel it a little bit more when you're fighting a fish or when you're casting, you're gonna feel a deep bend in that rod when it's slow versus when it's fast. Now the rod action that you go with is totally up to you and that's something that you're gonna have to learn over time. What do you like? Do you like a faster fill? Do you like a slower fill? Now, personally, my recommendation is before you buy a fly rod, have that shop owner or whoever's working at the, the place you're buying your fly rod, have them put a reel and fly line on that rod for you so you can go outside and cast it. And most shops will do that for you. And that's really gonna allow you to, to see, how does this rod feel? Do I like it? Does it match me just naturally? You'll know right off. And if it does, then you can purchase it. And if not, you avoided a bad investment. What you might find is that for different fishing scenarios, you like different actions. So for me, for example, I prefer faster rods if I need to cast further or from throwing heavier bugs. But I really enjoy slower action rods for smaller streams and light presentations. So it's all user preference and you really won't know what you like until you cast it. Now rods typically come in pieces, but there are single piece rods as well. Again, the choice is yours, but the idea behind having a four piece rod, for example, is that you can break it down so it's nice and packable. Single piece rods might be for those who fish a lot and want minimal assembly. I fish a lot, but I have to travel to where I'm gonna fish. So a single piece rod just isn't practical for me. Matter of fact, sometimes I'll use a six piece rod. This is a six piece rod here. And this rod has been awesome for the back country, for, for trips where you, know, you need to pack really light. Um, I can almost fit this rod in my pocket. It's kind of crazy. Rod length is also an attribute you wanna consider when purchasing a fly rod. Fly rods used for trout, and most freshwater species are gonna range between six and 10 feet. Now an eight and a half to nine foot rod is an extremely common rod, and is a really good option if you need one rod length, one rod to cover all your fishing needs. So in general, your longer rods are gonna be more efficient when you're fishing big water, while smaller rods are gonna be for having fun on smaller waters. Fly rods also come in weights, ranging from zero to 10. Now when you get down to smaller weights, zero, one, two, and three, you're talking about smaller creeks, smaller fish. When you're getting into the larger weights, eight, nine, and 10, you're talking about big water and bigger fish. But in general, if you're needing one rod to cover a wide range of, of fishing conditions for you, different water types, different species, an eight and a half to nine foot five weight rod is gonna suit you very well. Something worth mentioning is that rods also come in different materials graphite, fiberglass, and bamboo. Most all the rods you see hanging in fly shops or retail shops, those are graphite rods. Fiberglass and bamboo rods are typically very slow rods, are considered specialty rods, and usually are much harder to come by in your local shop. But I do wanna mention that there are rods beyond your typical graphite material. When you're shopping for a fly rod, you can identify its weight and length by the identification numbers on the rod itself. So for example, this rod here, it says number three line, that tells you it's a three weight rod. You see eight foot zero inches, so we know it's an eight foot rod. And the other digits you see are a combination of all those things in one. So it says 380-6. So it's a three weight rod. 
it's eight feet, zero inches, and it's a six piece. So when you need to identify the weight and length of a rod, make sure you check out these numbers. They should be on every single fly rod out there. At the end of the day, the fly rod you select is totally up to you, right? But let me say this, you do not have to break the bank to be a fantastic fly fisher. Matter of fact, once you're proficient, you should be able to catch just as many fish on the cheapest fly rod on the market as you can with the most expensive fly rod on the market from the most well-known fly rod manufacturers. My personal opinion, higher priced rods are unnecessary luxuries. Do I own some? Okay, yes I do. I'm not gonna be hypocritical here, but they're by no means necessary for my success on the water, ultimately. Knowing how to use the fly rod that you got is much more important than owning the most expensive fly rod on the market.